Hello everybody. Today it is my fourth lecture of the module 3. In module 3 we are basically discussing the one dimensional wave equation which is used to study the wave propagation as well as transverse vibration of string. So in this lecture we will do the force vibration analysis of the string. In earlier classes I have discussed the wave propagation and also the free vibration analysis of the transverse vibration of the string, free vibration case. Today I will discuss the force vibration case. Okay. So let us see what is the topic that I will try to present before you. Today I will discuss first the equation of motion for damped force vibration of the string. Here I mean the transverse vibration of string. In earlier cases I have neglected the damping in the equation of motion. Today I will see how the effect of damping can be incorporated in the equation of motion. Then secondly I will do the decoupling of partial differential equation of motion using model superposition technique. You know that in continuous system the equation of motions are partial differential equation and for the solution of such equation we use the separation of variable technique. Now here principle of model analysis or principle of mode superposition gives advantage to decouple the partial differential equation of motion into uh, independent number of discretized equation in terms of generalized time dependent coordinate. So here from partial differential equation we are going to the second order ordinary differential equation which we are familiar in single degree freedom system. So this gives us some advantage to find out the ready made solution that we already know for certain few cases and then we will see the solution of transverse vibration of string subjected to force. What type of force I will consider here? First I will consider step input at certain location and also harmonic excitation at some location. Then I will discuss this example with some numerical data. So these are the outlines of today's lecture. Okay. Now if we see the transverse vibration of string, the if I draw the free body diagram, here it is shown an element of the string is taken here and shown as a magnified free body diagram here you can see the string of element dx and uh, where the force that is the distributed force are fx t f is a function of x and t and total force here is fx t dx okay. because it is distributed and in the small element we can take the distribution as uniform so we are just uh, multiplying it fxt into dx. Then the tension that is acting on the string at this end is sx. At the other end it is the increment of tension that is sx plus ts by dx into dx. So this is the incremental part and it, it is coming from Taylor series expansion keeping only the first order term. Then here you can see the slope, the deflection here is y and here the increased deflection is y plus dy. So here the slope is del y by del x and here the increased slope or the change slope will be del y by del x plus del by del x into del y by del x into dx. So this is the change of slope that I have considered to represent the slope here adding with the earlier slope del y by del x. Okay. Now since here we are considering the force vibration with damping, so naturally the effect of damping has to be considered. Now damping opposes the motion and we consider the damping to be viscous that is it is proportional to the velocity. Let c dashed here you are seeing it is the damping 
parameter or damping constant per unit length. So, that condition you have to remember because not to confuse with uh, C that is the wave velocity, I have used the symbol C prime to represent the damping per unit per unit length. You remember C earlier we have used as a wave velocity which is nothing but S by rho. S is the tension in the string and rho is the linear density of the material. Okay. So, therefore, I have used two different symbols C prime and C. Okay. Now, this is the free body diagram that is shown here showing the forces and these forces when we sum up should be equal to the mass into acceleration that is the inertia force as per Newton second law. Okay. Now, if I write down the equation of force balance in the vertical direction, then we get this the component of this force tension in the vertical direction is S x plus del s by del x into d x into sin theta, but since theta is small we can take sin theta approximately equal to theta. So, S x plus del s by del x into d x into del y by del x plus del square y by del x square into d x. So, at this end the component of the force is vertically upward. At the other end it is minus S x del y by del x plus the externally applied load it is distributed uniformly in the small element. So, we are taking f x t into d x equal to the inertia force which is also opposite to the motion. So, rho x is the density of the material if I consider the density not to be uniform then I will write rho as a function of x. So, rho x d x del square y by del t square is the inertia force on this element and C prime into del y by del t. Del y by del t is the velocity and damping constant into velocity is the damping force per unit length. So, I multiplied it by dx. So, I get here the damping force and here it is inertia force. So, force balance equation is complete. Now, after cancelling some terms and ignoring the second order terms in dx, you will find when you expand this then you will find dx square is coming or other product of two small terms may appear. So, in that case we neglect all these small terms ultimately we get the equation of motion as del by del x into S x del y by del x plus f x t equal to rho x del square y by del t square plus c prime del y by del t where C prime is the damping constant per unit length. In this equation, this is a general equation. Even the cross section of the string is variable, then also this can be incorporated and also if the tension is in the string is not uniform, you can consider this equation. However, in most of the cases to simplify the problem and computational effort, we take the tension in the string is uniform and material density is uniform in most of the practical cases. So, therefore, taking all these conditions that damping is very small and damping is also very small in some cases say if it is a steel material you can know the damping is even say 1 percent maximum 2 percent. And so, neglecting damping and taking tension as, as uniform and material density rho is also constant, then we can write the equation of motion of the force vibration of the string as S into del square y by del x square plus f x t equal to rho del square y by del t square. So, you can see this is the inertia force and this is the externally applied load and this force is coming due to the elastic restoring force. Okay. So, we have to solve this partial differential equation. Here you will find additionally the f x t that is the distributed forces appearing in the equation. Due to appearance of 
FXT, our procedure will be slightly different because this equation is not a homogeneous equation. So, we have to ultimately solve a non-homogeneous equation. Now, this equation is obtained by force balance applying the Newton's second law, but this can also be obtained from the energy principle that we have already discussed and in that case the work done due to externally applied load have to be taken and also the work done due to damping force have to be taken as a non-conservative work done. Now after getting the equation of motion here what we have done we neglected damping. So that is our first assumption. and we have taken S and rho are constant and they are not changing along the length of the string. So with that condition we now arrive at this equation. Okay. Now solution of this equation can be obtained by various means. So we will obtain the solution by model superposition technique. Model superposition is a very powerful technique that is used in continuous system because of its inherent properties of the mode shapes and one important property is orthogonality condition. That property gives us advantage to decouple the equation of motion. So we will use the model superposition technique. Here the phi i x is the mode shape of the string of the string or cable whatever you call at ith mode and eta i t is the generalized coordinate generalized coordinate. So ultimately our intention is to convert the differential equation into time dependent equation such that it becomes an ordinary differential equation of second order. Okay. Now here you can see if I expand this I can write say phi 1 eta 1 plus phi 2 eta 2 plus phi 3 eta 3 like that up to infinite number of modes. Number of modes is infinite. However, for practical computation infinite modes cannot be taken. So you have to truncate somewhere. Generally it is seen that first few modes say if I take first say three modes then it is sufficient to compute the displacement very accurately. But when I want other quantities where derivatives of the mode shapes are involved then you may consider the more number of terms in this series. Okay. So with this assumption now I will proceed towards the decoupling of the equation of motion. So equation of motion you have seen this. So divide this equation by rho. So if I divide this equation by rho, I will get s by rho here in the first term s by rho that is nothing but c square. So c square is coming here. Then it is fxt 1 by rho and del square y by del t square. So now we substitute this y x t equal to summation of phi x into eta i t in the above equation. So substitute this after substituting you will get this c square is a constant term and then your summation will come and mode number 1 to infinity and here because of the space derivative the derivative will be a ordinary differentiation with this and then your eta i t will remain as it is plus 1 by rho f x t will remain as it is and here we will get summation i is equal to 1 to infinity because there are infinite number of modes and here we are differentiating with respect to time. So phi i will remain as it is and eta i double dot t that is the second differentiation of this eta. So ultimately after substituting this we will get this equation. Okay. So this equation is written here and you can see 
that if I use this here c square is equal to s by rho then this c square is equal to s by rho so then we can get a simply this equation with this s d square phi by dx square eta i t actually this phi k or index can be your i also any index so f x t summation rho rho has gone on that side so rho phi i eta double dot t ok now multiply both sides by phi k so this is the procedure if I multiply both sides of this equation by phi k so I multiplied phi k here and here also phi k and then also here the phi k so then I integrate with respect to 0 to L alright now multiply both sides by phi k and then integrate between the limit 0 to L why I am integrating both sides of the equation with limit 0 to L the intention is to use the orthogonality condition so that the summation may not come because only one term will remain due to orthogonality condition because phi i phi k dx integrated in the domain of the string will give you the zero value if i is equal to not k that means this condition we already know is equal to zero if i is equal to not k but if i is equal to k then if normalized mode shape is used this integration is is equal to 1 ok. So, because we are using the normalized mode shape what is normalized mode shape that we used earlier normalized mode shape at any mode you will get normalized mode shape as we normalized with respect to mass so it is sine i pi x by l l is the length of this string ok next step now we also use this condition because this condition is earlier obtained when we use this free vibration condition that is in free vibration motion is harmonic so we can assume that y x t is equal to phi x into some harmonic function say sin omega t so then after second differentiation when the inertia term is involved we get minus rho omega i square so that is appearing here so this condition we can now use so because of that we now use this uh, here this s del square phi i del x square phi k eta t dx and f x t phi k dx and here you can see rho phi i phi k eta double dot t dx so this is the orthogonality condition that has to be used and you can see when it is summed up phi 1 phi 2 will come phi 1 phi 3 will come like that but all the terms will be 0 except rho phi i square dx integration 0 to l which is 1 so ultimately here we will get eta i double dot t so this term is inertia term that is coming here and from that condition because this is here if you substitute this then you will get omega i square eta i t ok and this is a term you can see here when this is integrated with respect to l then the result will be a function of time because there will be no variable x when the limit is put so therefore this will be a function of time that is qit qit is called the generalized force qit is a generalized force which is determined as qi is the generalized force at ith mode and it is determined as 0 to l integration f x t is the distributed force in any manner maybe uniformly maybe non uniformly or maybe at a discrete point then phi i dx ok now if i want to calculate the generalized force in the first mode then i will be substituted by 1 so you can now see this is the equation of motion that have to be solved to first find the eta it eta it is generalized time dependent coordinate 
ओके ओमेगा आई इज द नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी आयत नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग ट्रांसवर्स वाइब्रेशन ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग ओके नाउ वी हैव फाउंड दिस इक्वेशन जनरलाइज करने वंस दिस इज फाउंड सॉल्यूशन ऑफ ईटा इज फाउंड देन यू कैन फाइंड वाई एक्स टी बिकॉज वाई एक्स टी इज नथिंग बट फाइव एक्स इंटू ईटा टी एंड इट इज साम्ड ओवर डिफारेंट मोड्स ओके सो लेट आज समराइज द स्टेप्स सो स्टेप्स फॉर सोल्यूशन ऑफ फोर्स वाइब्रेशन प्रॉब्लम यूजिंग मॉडल सुपरपोजिशन टेक्निक हाउ इट इज डान इन एनी प्रॉब्लम यू उल हैव दि फिजिकल पैरामिटार्स दैट शुड बी नोन बिफोर सल्विंग दि प्रब्लेम सो फिजिकल पैरामिटार्स लाइक दि लेंथ अफ दि स्ट्रिंग दि सपोर्ट कंडिशन देन योर दिस डेंसिटी अफ दि मेटेरियल देन योर टेंशन इन दि स्ट्रिंग दैट आर नोन so in model analysis or model superposition technique the primary requirement is to carry out the model analysis what is model analysis model analysis is nothing but the analysis to find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes it is also called the eigen value analysis eigen value or eigen vectors now here first we will carry out the model analysis with an aim to find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes so this is the most important requirement without that requirement you cannot proceed to solve the equation of motion using the model superposition technique but if somebody adopts a direct integration scheme a numerical integration scheme like like runga gutta method or other method that is available in differential equation then you need not find the natural frequencies and mode shapes okay but here we are finding the natural frequencies and mode shapes in order to decouple the equation of motions and we can get the equation of motion similar to single degree freedom system okay so given the physical parameters we find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes now express the displacement as the sum of the product of mode shape and generalized time coordinate for number of significant modes so what i will write here y x t y x t is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 phi i x eta i t now here number of modes theoretically may be infinite but here for practical computation i will use finite number of modes say n number of modes the significant mode generally say 3 to 5 that it depends on what quantities you are interested so therefore we find this displacement as a superimposition of mode shapes product of the mode shape and generalized coordinate okay summing up the product is done with a finite number of modes whether it is 5 10 15 25 50 whatever you like but n should be finite theoretically n is infinite but in practical computation infinite number of modes cannot be taken okay now substitute this force vibration equation and decouple it using orthogonality condition that i have discussed earlier uh, how the equations are decoupled so you can see the steps how it is decoupled step by step so decoupling of the equation of motion is done and we ultimately arrive at this equation so that is the equation where we will now come so uh, this equation is now obtained after decoupling here you are seeing one term qit that is the generalized force that has to be also found once you know the force distribution so force distribution is known is fxt is a distributed force and then multiplied by the ith mode shape and then it is integrated from 0 to l in the domain of the string we are getting a time function because qit is a function of time okay qit is a function of time because it is integrated with respect to x it is a definite integral so therefore we are getting a function of time so this equation is a non homogeneous ordinary differential equation with constant coefficient 
here you can see because of normalization procedure with respect to mass we are getting here coefficient 1 otherwise some coefficient other than 1 that is also known as generalized mass may come but here we have adopted a technique to find out a mode shape normalized with respect to mass omega i is the ith natural frequency of the string so this is the system equation that we now have to be solved so this equation has to be solved by two parts first is homogeneous solution homogeneous solution second part is particular integral pi pi is the particular integral because it is a linear differential equation so we get homogeneous part plus particular integral okay all right particular integral can be found using duhamel's integral or in other technique also for example in steady state condition this if the harmonic force is applied we know the steady state response so that also can be used but the general method is Duhamel integral in analytical procedure. So you can use this Duhamel integrals to find out the particle solution. Now here you can see that homogeneous solution when I use this ani double dot plus omega i square eta i equal to 0. So this solution of this equation will give you the homogeneous solution. Now if I use this eta i is equal to e to the power lambda or e to the power lambda t okay lambda is a root then we will get here you can see the lambda square plus omega i square equal to 0. So naturally the roots of this equation now becomes plus minus i omega. So the solution that you get homogeneous solution eta t is a1 so a1 is a constant of integration is equal to e to the power i omega t plus a2 e to the power minus i omega t now because of this complex exponential you may now get this i omega t as cos omega t plus i sin omega t whereas e to the power minus i omega t can be written as cos omega t minus i sin omega t. Using this then again we come back to this equation clubbing the constants. So a i b i are the constants of integration that have to be found from the initial condition and this is the forced response of the generalized coordinate. So QIT is the generalized force and this is the impulse response function. Impulse response function have been derived earlier for undamped cases the impulse response function HI at ith mode is nothing but 1 by rho omega i sin omega i t where omega is the ith natural frequency and rho is the linear density of the material that is mass per unit length. So where this quantity is known and then our this qit is also known we now find out the complete solution eta it and then we can write the general solution as y x t equal to summation i is equal to infinity phi i x eta it again i am paying attention here because the summation that is shown with infinite number of modes is practically not possible so therefore we have to truncate it to a finite number of modes say n ok. Now let us see some example to solve the force vibration case of the string ok. Say a string is given which is supported here total length is L and the force is applied at the center of the string that is L by 2 from one end the nature of the force is a constant force that is force time t if you see it is a constant force that means the force is fxt is p if t is equal to greater than 0 
and it is 0 if t less than 0 ok. So, that condition we get it is like a step input. So, derive the expression for the displacement response of the string take S be the uniform tension and rho is the density of the material ok. Now, here we shall go step by step. First step is the model analysis. So, aim of the model analysis to find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes. In fact, there are infinite number of natural frequencies in the continuous system like a string and corresponding to each natural frequency there is also a mode shape. So, infinite natural frequencies and infinite mode shapes are the characteristics of the continuous system that is continuously distributed parameters. Now, the natural frequency of omega n the nth natural frequency is given as n pi root over s divided by rho l square where rho is the material density, l is the length of the string and s is the tension uniform tension. So, normalized mode shapes is now given as phi n x equal to root over 2 by rho l sin n pi x by l. After decoupling we already got this equation eta i double dot t plus omega i square eta i t equal to q i t. Now, we have to find out the q i t. Now, q i t the general expression for q i t is given as f x t phi i x d x 0 to l. Now, you can see the nature of f x t is this a constant force p. The force is applied at l by 2. So, l by x is fixed here l by 2 t and it is like that constant force. But where the force is applied in the string if you see the string here force is applied at the center ok. The dynamic force is applied at the center. So, therefore, f x t can be written as p using the direct delta function x minus l by 2, where the meaning of this that at x is equal to l by 2 only the force exists and otherwise the force is 0. The delta is the direct delta function. and it has got very excellent properties that if I carry out this integration say any function f x multiplied by direct delta function at x is equal to say a d x will get the result as only f the function evaluated at a. So, the excitation say force is acting at a when we integrate function any function of x which is multiplied with a direct delta function with argument x minus a then the result of integration is f a. So, using this property now I will express the generalized force. So, generalized force is q i t equal to f x t into phi k x or phi i x k and i is the many index to represent the particular number of modes and it is integrated between the limit 0 to L. Now, here f x t is p represented by direct delta function direct delta x minus L by 2. Properties of the direct delta function that is very useful to find out the integral is now this. So, now if I substitute here this p let us carry out this integration in detail. So, integration for q i will be p direct delta function x l by 2 multiplied by phi k x. So, phi k x is nothing but the ith mode shape or kth mode shape. So, root 2 l sin i pi x by l into d x. Now, here the result will be this p root 2 rho l and here instead of x we will substitute l by 2. So, sin i pi by 2. 
so this is the result and if i take p inside the square root term then it will be p square so this is the generalized force that we have found out okay so now we have to find the total response one is homogeneous part and another is particular integral so homogeneous part is written here and particular integral because this is a step function so it is uh, the constant force that is taken outside the constant term is taken outside the integral sign and then you know that this impulse response function is at ith mode is sin omega i t and here argument has to be t minus tau and therefore other terms rho omega i is coming here and it is integrated so the result is eta i t equal to a i sin omega i t plus b i cos omega i t plus 1 by rho omega i root over 2 p square by rho l sin i pi by 2 into cos 1 minus omega i t this expression we are familiar when we discuss this uh, response of single degree freedom system unknown system to step excitation okay now here two unknown parameters are seen in this equation what are these unknown parameter one is a and another is b so a and b has to be found out at each mode now applying the initial condition we can find out but initial condition is known only for y x t and y dot x t not on eta eta t and eta dot t so we have to write the full expression then we have to apply the initial condition now if somebody applies the initial condition with this equation then he may get a wrong result so initial condition has to be applied when we write the complete expression of the response that is y x t is equal to phi i x into eta i t and y dot that is the velocity is equal to phi i x eta i dot t okay so complete response we have to write like that and then we will apply the initial condition okay so initial condition at t is equal to 0 both displacement and velocity are 0 so we take y x comma 0 is equal to now here if i write the full expression then we can put here this t is equal to 0 so this term will be cancelled and only bi will be there and uh, say when we put t is equal to 0 cos 0 is 1 so this term will also get cancelled so we are getting only this y x 0 equal to summation i is equal to 1 root over 2 rho l sin i pi x by l into b i equal to 0 similarly for uh, velocity y dot x 0 because the initial conditions are 0 so we are getting this root 2 rho l sin i pi x by l but here after differentiation you can see we will get this a i omega i cos omega i t so cos omega i t at t is equal to 0 is 1 so here we are getting this equal to y x 0 equal to summation i is equal to 1 to infinity root over 2 by rho l sin i pi x by l into a i omega i equal to 0 now again you are getting the summation term summation term so to get rid of summation term you now again use this technique that we have used for decoupling of the equation of motion that means you multiply both sides of the equation by say mode shape phi k and then integrate from 0 to l you will get only the term where the i is equal to k so therefore other terms will get cancelled because of orthogonality condition but in these two cases where the displacement and velocities are zero and it is a step input it can be seen that a i b i both constants are coming to be zero therefore the response of the string to step excitation is y x t summation i is equal to infinity 
then this is the term which contains phi x. So, root over 2 by rho l sin i pi x by l into 1 by rho omega i root over 2 p square by rho l sin i pi by 2 into 1 minus cos omega i t. So, this is the final expression for the displacement transverse displacement of the string subjected to step input at the center. Okay. Next example let us consider a flexible cable of length L is subjected to a sinusoidal force F naught f naught with driving frequency omega naught. We are required to derive the expression for the displacement response of the string. Take S the tension of the string as a uniform and rho the density of the material is also uniform. Let us take only first mode. So, first we will derive the expression and then we will calculate other parameters that is required. So, given material density is 7850 kg per meter cube and uniform tension 12000 Newton, length of the cable 1 meter, we are required to calculate the fundamental time period. If I calculate the fundamental frequency, then fundamental time period can be calculated. Now, suppose the magnitude of the force is 500 Newton and driving frequency is 1.34 radian per second calculate the displacement at t is equal to 1 second. Now, here it is the string and at the center the force is applied, the force is of the form f naught f naught sin omega naught t. So, this is the nature of the force that is applied here and you can see the time period of the force is 2 pi by omega naught. The amplitude of the force is f naught. So, this is the force time history. Again, we will solve this problem neglecting damping. Okay. So, we will adopt the model supervision technique. So, first natural frequency omega n has to be taken here and first mode shape only has to be taken here. So, the expression for natural frequency is omega n equal to n pi root over s by rho l square. You can see here n varies from 1 to up to infinity because theoretically it has infinite number of modes, but here we are required to solve the problem taking only the first mode. So, we will take n is equal to 1. So, therefore, the first natural frequency is pi root over s rho l square and first mode shape normalized with respect to mass is root over 2 by rho l into sin pi x by l. So, these two quantities are important for us. Now, after decoupling that we have seen earlier, we now get the equation only for first mode as eta 1 double dot omega 1 square eta 1 equal to q 1 t. Now, q 1 t is the generalized force in the ith mode. So, q 1 is the generalized force in the first mode. first mode. You can see the first mode shape is this. If I draw the first mode shape, okay. so this is the first mode shape. Sin pi x by L. Okay. So, you can see the boundary condition is satisfied at x is equal to 0 this is 0 and x is equal to L, this is also 0 and this is the amplitude of the mode shape which is normalized mode shape here with respect to mass density. So, generalized force in the first mode now has to be calculated and its calculation is 0 to L f x t phi 1 x d x. Okay. Now, let us see how we will calculate this generalized force. Again, if I see the string which is supported here and force is applied at the center okay, L by 2 L by 2 and force is F naught sin omega naught t. So, therefore, the f x t 
that we used to calculate the generalized force now have to be written in this fashion using the direct delta function ok so we have written this f x t as this ok so q i t now the integration of this f naught sin omega naught t direct delta x minus l by 2 and this is the mood shape function because q i t we have written q 1 t written as f x t phi 1 x d x integration 0 to l. So, this is the first mode shape this is nothing but phi 1 and this is your f x t. So, using the properties of direct delta function what is the properties of direct delta function you can see the direct delta function is if you integrate any function say g x multiplied by a direct delta function evaluated at this we get g x 1. So, using this now we can get the calculation of q i 1 t as this because here if I put x is equal to l by 2 sin pi by 2 is 1. So, therefore, this term is coming and this is a constant. So, this is taken inside the square root term. So, f naught square and rho l and sin omega naught t. So, this is our generalized force. So, now we have to solve this equation. This equation we have to solve. It is same type of equation that we have obtained in case of single degree freedom system subjected to harmonic input. Okay. So, now the response will consist of two parts one is this free vibration solution plus the force vibration that is particular integral. So, we will now write the response as this is you can see this is the free vibration solution a 1 sin omega 1 t plus b 1 cos omega 1 t this is the homogeneous solution of the equation ordinary differential equation this is homogeneous solution eta i homogeneous okay. and particular integral we have to find out. Okay. Now, for harmonic excitation the steady state part coming as a particular solution will now can be written as this is the term forcing term and it is written as sin omega naught t divided by 1 minus r square and coefficients are omega 1 square and other coefficient is f naught square by rho l. So, this is the steady state part or particular integral that you can call it where r is the frequency ratio. Frequency ratio that is omega naught by omega 1. Omega naught is the driving frequency and omega 1 is the first natural frequency. Now, you can see this expression becomes unbounded when r is equal to 1 that is the driving frequency matches the first natural frequency of the system. But uh, here in the data we have taken the value which is away from the first natural frequency. So, it will not be unbounded. So, at the point where the natural frequency matches with the driving frequency you will get the resonant condition. At the resonant condition if I plot r versus amplitude and r is equal to 1 exactly r is equal to 1 we will get unbounded solution that is like that. But when a damping case is considered we will get a limited amplitude. So, that is the damped case. Damped case and this is undamped. This is undamped. So, we are now dealing with the undamped. So, we should be very careful that response does not get uh, unbounded 
because of matching the natural frequency with the driving frequency ok. So, now with this data we will calculate the other quantities ok. So, R is given as omega naught by omega 1. So, therefore, complete solution taking only first mode this is the mode shape we have written phi 1 x into this is the generalized coordinate complete solution of the generalized coordinate eta 1 t because here only first mode is taken so no need of considering any summation. So, response is only this phi 1 x into eta 1 t phi 1 x eta 1 t this is the response. So, we have written this and y dot t now differentiate with respect to time we are getting a 1 omega 1 cos omega 1 t this is the constant term. So, this will be appearing as it is after differentiation of this minus b 1 omega 1 sin omega 1 t and when it is differentiated omega naught cos omega naught t will come and other terms will remain as it is. Now, at t is equal to 0 displacement is 0. So, y x 0 equal to 0. So, we put the left hand side is 0 and other right hand side we put t is equal to 0. So, here we are getting b 1. So, therefore, from this equation we get b 1 equal to 0. So, one constant is found other constant will be now found from the condition of velocity. To find another constant let us apply initial condition on the velocity. The string is at rest at t is equal to 0. So, the initial velocity is 0. So, the initial velocity expression we have got earlier and we are rewriting here root over 2 by rho l sin pi x by l into a 1 omega 1 cos omega 1 t minus b 1 omega 1 sin omega 1 t plus root over f naught square by rho l into after differentiation omega naught by omega 1 square cos omega naught t divided by 1 minus r square at t is equal to 0 velocity is 0 hence we put here 0 and then in right hand side we put t is equal to 0. So, what we get this is the space function will appear as a constant value because we are substituting only the value of t. So, there a 1 omega 1 is found and because of this we are also found because this is at t is equal to 0 this cos omega naught t is 1 because cos 0 is 1 and this is becoming 0 at t is equal to 0 and this is 1 at t is equal to 0 and this is also 1 at t is equal to 0. So, we are ultimately getting this equation. Now, we have to find out a 1, but this coefficient is still there. So, we can find out again uh, the applying the orthogonality condition that is multiply both sides of the above equation by mode shape root 2 rho l sin pi x by l and then integrate using orthogonality condition. So, we will get uh, this sin pi x by l square when we integrate we get l by 2 and this will appear as a constant. So, root over 2 by rho l into l by 2 constant and this is the term inside the bracket. So, therefore, the equation to find out the constant a 1 now coming as a 1 omega 1 plus root over f naught square divided by rho l into omega naught divided by omega 1 square into 1 by 1 minus r square equal to 0. So, from that equation we now arrive a 1 equal to minus root over f naught square divided by rho l into omega naught divided by omega 1 cube 1 by 1 minus r square. What is r? r is nothing but the ratio of driving frequency to the first natural frequency of the string ok. So, let us illustrate this with numerical data. So, we now get the full expression with the constants known. So, we write y x t equal to this is the mode shape and eta 1 t that is complete solution we have got now because we now are able to get a 1 b 1 of course is 0. So, we are now getting this term root over f naught by rho l into because a 1 sin omega naught t 
B1 is 0, so cos omega naught t term is not coming. So here you can see F naught square divided by rho L into 1 by omega 1 square sin omega naught t divided by 1 minus r square minus this is the first part of the homogeneous solution with sin function that is coming as root over f naught square by rho l into omega naught divided by omega 1 cube into 1 by 1 minus r square sin omega 1 t where r is understood as the ratio of omega naught by omega 1. Okay. So after simplification we now get this y x t as root 2 f naught by rho l omega 1 square into 1 by 1 minus r square into sin pi x by l into sin omega naught t minus r sin omega 1 t. So displacement of the string at any instant of time at location x is equal to l by 2. So if I put x is equal to l by 2 now it becomes 1. So the final answer is y is equal to y at l by 2 at any instant of time t is root 2 f naught divided by rho l omega 1 square into 1 by 1 minus r square sin omega naught t minus omega naught by omega 1 that is the r into sin omega 1 t. Okay. Numerical calculation given the material density is 7850 kg per meter cube. Uniform tension 12,000 Newton, length of the cable 1 meter, calculate fundamental time period. Suppose magnitude of the force is 500 Newton and driving frequency is 1.34 radian per second. Calculate the maximum displacement at t is equal to 1 second. So first question let us answer. So omega 1 if I take n is equal to 1 then omega 1 is equal to pi root over s by rho l square. So substituting s the uniform tension as 12,000 Newton and rho as 7850 kg per meter cube length is 1 so 1 square it becomes 3.88 radian per second. So time period will be 2 pi by omega 1. So if you substitute this here omega 1 you can calculate the fundamental time period. So frequency ratio is omega naught by omega 1. So omega naught that is the driving frequency is given as 1.34. So 1.34 divided by 3.88 the frequency ratio is 0.35. Okay. So with this data let us proceed to the second part. So second part that is we have to calculate the displacement at the center of the string. So y l by 2 into t equal to root 2 f naught divided by rho l omega 1 square into 1 by 1 minus r square that expression we have derived into sin omega naught t minus omega naught by omega 1 sin omega 1 t. Substitute all numerical value f naught was 500 and rho is 7850 length is 1 omega 1 is 3.88 so omega 1 square is 3.88 square into 1 divided by 1 minus 0.35 square. What is 0 0.35? 0 0.35 is the r. r is nothing but omega naught divided by omega 1. So that we have calculated and we have substituted here r is equal to 1.35 into sin 3.88 into t and minus omega naught by omega 1 sin 1.34 t. Now when t is equal to 1 at any instant of time we can now calculate and we can plot the graph also if required. So at any instant of time say t is equal to 1 we now substitute here t is equal to 1 second but remember that sin 1.34 that should be in radian that should be in radian. So calculate this sine function with radian. So we are getting 0.9735 and here this ratio is 0 0.35 into 0.9735 bracket closed. Other data is 1 by 1 minus 0 0.35 square and this data is 500 divided by 7850 into 1 into 3.88 square and root over 2. So that is constant. So let us summarize what we have done today. 
in this lecture forced damped transverse vibration of a string subjected to uniform tension has been discussed the technique of decoupling of the governing differential equation of motion was discussed with the help of modern superposition technique examples of forced vibration of string subjected to two types of force input one is step input and the second one is harmonic force that is sinusoidal force applied at the sum location have been solved with numerical data the procedure was illustrated finally thank you very much Thank you.